miss it. And the kick is no good! Newton runs it left, galloping to the far sideline. The kick is good! And the Patriots prevail! Rainbow's turning it out there, touchdown! Looks, puffs, throws, Landry caught it! Touchdown! Intercepted, Deion Jones, and Jones is going to the end zone. Josh going to throw it behind him. The Beasley going to throw it again to a man wide open. Gabriel Davis, touchdown! He's thinking, got it! Touchdown, Miami! Kitten looks to throw down the near sideline, and that ball picked off. Jason Hill walks into the end zone, and there's not been a team, and they can stop that play. Set, the ball is loose, and recovered by the Giants. Touchdown, Titans! That's three for double two. Robbie Gold has it straight ahead, and good! That's deflected, intercepted, Tyron Matthew. Tyreek Hill over the shoulder, touchdown! The Cheetah, who's putting on a clinic in front of a national audience. Wow, just hearing that gets my juices going. Welcome to Game Day View presented by Mercedes-Benz. I am Andrew Hawkins, joined by Cynthia Freeland, Greg Rosenthal. Cynthia is all jacked up for Sunday football. How you doing, Cynthia? Uh, I'm ready. I don't want anyone coming for my neck. <laughs> I get it. That's what this show is about, preventing people coming for our neck. That's why we make all the right choices. We're starting off with the Browns at Titans. Going right to picks here. The Titans are favored in this one by four and a half. And I myself, no surprise, am going with the Browns. The reason being, I just like the momentum this team has had through the last couple of weeks. Last week, you've seen a lot of their good players come on. Obviously, Nick Chubb is back. But Jarvis Landry at the receiver position had his best game of the season. And it was one of those games where you kind of watch. You know he's a team leader. Um, but he was the catalyst for Baker Mayfield getting going. Because as good as the run game is, if Baker isn't playing to the level that we need as, a, as Browns fans, then there's not really a good chance of them making it into the playoffs or that far into it. I, th I feel like with Jarvis coming on the way he has, now we can see a Baker Mayfield that will rise his, his level of play to the level we need. Cynthia, what do you have for us? I think this one goes the way of whichever running back or running back duo is most efficient. And for me, that is a five-point win in favor of the Titans. However, don't worry, I still have the Browns making the playoffs for you, Hawk. Not because of it's for you, but Thank just you. because Thank they you. do. <laughs> what happens here is if you look to see at these running backs, five up uh, at the top five slots in terms of yards over expected rush they land in three of them so not just nick chubb not just derrick henry but also kareem hunt it's really going to go by way of who can solidify their run game such that the play action can come off of that so for me in this one there's just a slight advantage for ryan Tannehill and aj brown in the situation what do you have greg i have a very similar score i have the titans winning in a shootout 34 to 30. I want to see if Baker Mayfield can show mm. that he belongs like with the big boys. This Browns team, whether they belong with the big boys. It's kind of like me doing a show with Cynthia and Hawk. It's like two TP TV professionals. They're talking about their reel before the show. It's like, I don't have a reel. I'm like <laughs> Baker Mayfield. I don't even know what a reel is. He's never been in these big games. He's never shown he can do it at the <laughs> NFL level. He's got to go out there and prove it. That's proper, Cynthia. What else is? Super proper. Okay, not only will Baker Mayfield have more than 221 passing yards, but it says here on my card, yep, he has the longest reel of commercials of any player in the NFL. That's a fact right there. <laughs> Why is he going to have more than 221 passing yards? Because the Titans give up a bunch of air yards. They, the Jarvis Landry factor is going to be real in this one, missing pieces along that defense, including Jadavion Clowney. Yeah, that's going to be a problem for them. So realistically here, Baker Mayfield more than 221. And then on the other side, Derrick Henry, 92 rush yards. Yeah, that's going to happen. He's going to have more than that. Yes, there are some stats to show that he struggles against the Browns, but don't do pitcher versus batter stats for football. It doesn't work like that. This is a new system, a new scheme, a new defense, a new game. Every single game different. You need to get Derrick Henry involved early and often. 92 rush yards. It's going to be more than that. Okay, what's next? We're gonna do a little Saints and Falcons, one of my favorite matchups of the year, of the, you know, really every season. Saints are favored by three in this game. I have the Saints winning by four. It could be Taysom Hill's last start for the Saints. We hear that Drew Brees could be returning next week. He's eligible to come off injured reserve. I'm not worried about Taysom Hill because the Saints have their defensive line. Cam Jordan, when he sees Matt Ryan, 
is like sitting down for Thanksgiving dinner. He just gets hungry. He's going to have some good eating. <laughs> so will David on Yamada. I don't care that Marcus Davenport's not there. Trey Hendrickson's one of the league leaders in sacks. It's just a mismatch. Every team, this def- every time this defensive line plays Atlanta, they get sacks. What do you think, Cynthia? I think Demario Davis also needs to have his name mentioned, as does this pass defense in general. I think when you look to see the trajectory of this game, I have a five-point win, 26-21, in favor of the Saints. A lot of people are talking about, oh, are they on upset alert? What's going on here? But no, it's really going to be, it's going to come down to the fact that Taysom Hill is going to be able to do enough to win because of how good the defense is. Taysom Hill doesn't need to throw for 300 yards. He doesn't even need to throw for one passing touchdown. He just needs to keep the ball and the possession on their side enough, be just efficient enough to get that win. What do you have, Hawk? I like the Saints as well. I just think they're a very good team. You talked about Demario Davis, one of the best linebackers, if not the best linebacker in football. So I agree with all of that. To the Taysom Hill point, there are a lot of questions for me. I do think at some point he needs to throw a touchdown pass being a quarterback, especially (laughs) with the contract he has, as well as, you know, the future. But you're right, Cynthia. This doesn't matter right now. This team is very good. And Greg, I, I can't believe Drew Brees is on his way back. I did not know ribs heal that quick, but here we are. That's why I'm not a doctor. And I'm just a former player that played for the Browns, so that's why people come at my neck online. All right, (laughs) Colts at Texans are up next. The Colts are favored in this one by three and a half. I don't mean to tease your picks, but at the same time, I don't care. This is our second broadcast of the week. I'm going Lone Hawk here. (laughs) I am going with the Texans. I do like their chances. I know they have players out, but I feel like the Colts, for me, have been a question all year. They played really well at times, but if you look at their schedule, their strength of schedule isn't that great and you never know which Colts team you're going to get on a week to week I can see the Texans coming out Deshaun Watson specifically having a big game and walking away with a W so you said you have Deshaun Watson and you said it was three and a half that the Colts are favorite bars but I only have a two-point win for the Colts so maybe we're kind of on the same side it's kind of like a you know like a a, a medium hawk here right here so why well I think I think Jonathan Taylor and DeForest Buckner coming back are going to be huge additions Jonathan Taylor specifically that ability to run the ball will be a way that they can exploit the Texans the Texans have been super vulnerable to the run that keeps the possession in the Colts hands just long enough to get that two-point win Greg which way are you going mm. this one? I'm going Colts 30 to 24. You know, Hawk mentions like the Colts haven't, you know, had that tough of a strength of schedule. It's like, you know what helps their strength of schedule? Playing the four and seven Texans. That's how they've got a good record. <laughs> it's beating a bunch of bad teams like the Texans. And this is how I'm going to get back into second place. I'm like the Colts of this show. You know, maybe I'm not going <laughs> to the championship, but I'm going to get into the playoffs. I'm going to beat bad teams like uh, Hawk. And uh, I think this offensive line is going to have a resurgence this week. What do you, you think? Peg me more of an Eagles guy. Performances. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think Philip Rivers will have more than 261 passing yards against the Texans. I think the Texans defense has a lot of areas they're vulnerable. So this could be like a T.Y. Hilton throwback game. How is it a throwback for T.Y. Hilton? But whatever. More than two. 261 for Rivers. And now Brandon Cook, somebody's got to step up now that Will Fuller is no longer able to play. And this will be Brandon Cook's per my model. More than 73 receiving yards. Not because this is a defense that you want to try to pass on, but because there are fewer and fewer options. And without any options, you got to go with the one that seems to be the most sure handed. For me, that is Brandon Cook's more than 73 receiving yards. Okay, what's next? We are going to the NFC North. It's Lions Bears. The Bears are favored by three. I mean, this I don't know how this game got into the first block. It's like we're handing out charity here. Here's some charity for the Bears. You're going <laughs> to win a game. Finally, let's get it done. I'm on Team Bears today. I don't think these guys are going to be. Their defense is by far the best group in this game to keep it real. Kenny Galladay is not back for Detroit, who is still very banged up. So I'm not feeling any sort of Daryl Bevel bump here. I'm going with this Bears defense. Get to 6-6 and and stay in playoff contention. I know you don't agree with me, Cynthia. Uh, my heart agrees with you, but my math doesn't. First of all, you need to go Google the Daryl Bevel photo with his hair because it's amazing. That's the first thing. The second thing, yes, the Bears defense is the strongest union there, but Khalil Mack has been on the injury report. So that means that the opportunity for Matthew Stafford, who is perennially underrated, and TJ Hawkinson to really go off is a big factor in this one for me. So 
when I look at this game, I think, okay, running backs might make the difference. Adrian Peterson is going to go. No DeAndre Swift. That's your fantasy purpose. But you totally want to play David Montgomery in this one as well. You want to make sure you get lots of shares of him in daily and in regular fantasy. Hawk, what do you have? Yeah, I mean, you're going lone rose here, Greg, uh, because I'm going with the Lions, too. And it's similar to what uh, Cynthia said about Brandon Cooks. Not a lot of options. Got to go with him. There's not a lot of options of winners in this game, so I have to go with the Lions (laughs) because that's the better option. Similarly, how my wife picked me. Wasn't a lot of options at that point in her life, and I got her to put a ring on it. So I'm going with the Lions. I Also, undercover motivation for them. Whenever a coach gets fired... For some situations, depending on the field in in the building, players mm. have this uh, boost of motivation to kind of You've play been there, freely. Right? And I've been there way too many mm. times. So that's an, an, an undercover insight that I'm giving you and the reason why I'm picking the Lions. All right, uh, I think it's time to go to a little break here. There goes Tua, Tongue of Iloa, expected to start today for the Dolphins. What do you guys think about mm. that? I think I mean, I like whoever it starts good. You skin. comparing your wife to the Lions. Back on Game Day View, it's time for Drive to Excellence, presented by Mercedes-Benz. Cynthia's lead is back to two games after a last-minute pick swap on Sunday cost Hawk. Meanwhile, Greg's picks were well thought out, but he still finished last again. That was Drive to Excellence, presented by Mercedes-Benz. All right, we got Rams at Cardinals. Rams are favored in this one by two and a half. I'm going with the Cardinals, even though they're the underdog. I just feel like it, we can expect a bounce back game from Kyler Murray. The matchup I'm looking for in this one is Jalen Ramsey versus DeAndre Hopkins. They have battled a lot in their careers, and Jalen has been playing incredible this year. He has bolstered this Rams defense. He is one of the best defenders and the best defensive back in the NFL, but today will be his biggest test with the guy he's gone against, but with the new guy at the helm and Kyler Murray who loves to throw it deep. Cynthia, what do you got? He does love to throw it deep, which is why I too, by the way, this is one of my finest. I too have Arizona winning. I think that that it's going to be wow. all about Yeah, you wait, you didn't think that? I have 25-24 in this matchup. Why? Because Kyler Murray's rushing ability. Yeah, we saw a shoulder injury. And yes, we've seen, you know, not characteristic of him last week. But this is still both a dynamic run and pass offense. And with one more week from that set shoulder kind of setback, that's going to be the difference maker. And I like the connection with DeAndre Hopkins. I'm totally there. 
with you. And I think DeAndre Hopkins wants to make sure Jalen Ramsey maybe keeps a little quieter, not so much chirping to him. Mm. What do you got, Greg? That'll be a fun one. I have the Rams winning by 10. I think they're a much better Woo! team on both sides of the ball. I think the Rams defense right now is maybe the best in the league. Jared Goff is struggling, and that's the one thing that concerns me, but I don't think the Cardinals uh, defense rather has enough talent to really make it happen. They've been well coached all year, but they don't have great players beyond uh, Buda Baker right now. So Goff has been struggling. All he's got to do, hand the ball off. I think this Cardinals team has been a little overrated all year. They've lost a bunch of games now uh, in the last month. Cynthia, give me some proper performances to tell me I'm wrong. Number one, I love that you brought up Buda Baker. I try to get his name into every single one of our broadcasts, but Buda Baker's going to have a problem because Robert Woods, he's going to have fewer than 66 receiving yards at the Cardinals. You do, this is what this is what Buda Baker does. He shuts people down. Here's the thing about Robert Woods and this offense. They're really relying on Jared Goff to figure out kind of how to get rid of this front. They play a really weird front. Remember, sometimes the Cardinals don't even put any down linemen on the, on the line of scrimmage. It's crazy. So with these kind of looks, this is bad for Jared Goff, meaning not so great for Bobby Trees. Next up. Kyler Murray, heard of him, more than 236 passing yards. We talked about it before. It's the DeAndre Hopkins factor. It's the opportunity to get those short passes in. It could even be a potential situation where we see, you know, Andy Isabella from UMass. He's kind of like a Hawk special right mm. there. That's like a speedy guy. Yeah, yeah. You know, we don't, a little low key right there. 236 yards, more than that. What is up next? Oh, we got Pats. We got Chargers. We got the Chargers and the Rams playing at the same time. That doesn't happen out here in L.A. That, you know, my, my two kids will be watching this game in separate rooms. The Patriots are underdogs in this game by one, but I'm taking them to win by three points. I think they're coming together a little defensively uh, over the last few weeks. Bill Belichick has finally started to figure out the pieces that he has. And then I think he has a big time advantage against Anthony Lynn when it comes to, down to situational football, clock management, end of the game. You know this is going to be close. And I feel good because I know y'all are taking the Pats, and I thought maybe this is a time uh, where my heart was going to hurt me here and you catch up a game, but you're feeling me this week. I like it. I have a one-point Patriots win, 25-24 in this one. And, yeah, I think you're totally right. It's all about the defense. Uh, look at every single metric when it comes to Bill Belichick scheming against rookie quarterbacks. Uh, yeah, they mm. aren't so good for the rookie QB. I don't think it's going to be Justin Herbert's worst game. I don't think he's going to get held to, like, zero passing or something crazy like that. But I don't think it's going to be, like, the 300 thriller fourth quarter comeback that we're used to seeing. And I'm actually very concerned to see which of Greg's children he likes best as to which room he watches TV with his kids in. Anyways? Oh, I'm watching the Pats today. <laughs> Hawk, what do you have? Uh, I I'm going with the Patriots as well, and we are now officially on Meme Alert. I love how we have lone hawks, we have lone roses, but there's never a, a lone Cynthia because Greg and I no, are that's smart why enough she's to always first. attach. It's why we always have to at least one of us attach to her. None of us are dumb enough to, you know, at least whoa, attach whoa. to each other because then we know we're wrong. Last week you switched, remember? Last week on Sunday you switched to go with Greg. Yeah. And what happened? And, and what happens every single time? Last week, the Saints game, every time me and Greg are together, you can almost guarantee it's a loss because it's just the blind leading the blind. Anyway, okay, the Patriots. I liked, uh, you know, the way Herbert has been playing. You're right, Anthony Lynn has not been great down the stretch in some of these close games. More importantly, I like the Page or Belichick over a rookie quarterback every time it happens. So that's where I feel really confident that the, the Patriots will be able to pull this out. All right, next up, we have the Eagles at the Packers. The Packers are favored in this one by eight. Going with the Packers, um, they're just a better overall team all around. And specifically, I know we talk about it, we sound like a broken record. Wentz has to play better. And, you know, to a lot of people's points, I think it's time to start getting Hurts into this lineup a lot more frequent, if not even giving him a chance for the remainder of the season while there is still a chance because it has not gone the way that the, the Eagles organization has anticipated. Cynthia, what do you get? What was <laughs> Okay, go, so <laughs> Ten, I want to hear Packers. how you follow that up. <laughs> Ten point backers win to my to nineteen this matchup. Aaron Jones, big factor. Aaron Jones' ability to run, especially between the tackles, is great. Almost six yards per attempt. Yes, the Eagles have been good at stopping at only 3.3 yards, rushing yards allowed between the tackles. However, 
This is going to be a game where both a game script dictates that Aaron Jones is going to get a lot of carries. So don't worry, fantasy people. It is all good, all good, all going to happen for you there. And as for the Jalen Hurts note, I just want to say one little asterisk here. I mean, look at how much dead money Carson Wentz has for the Eagles over the next mm. two years. Like $59 million, something like that. Uh, we're not going to see Jalen Hurts. We're not, <laughs> unfortunately. Come on. Let's yeah. do it. Greg, what do you have? Not today. <laughs> I I have the Packers winning by 13. This is one of my favorite picks of the entire day. It's been weird. Like, I I gave the Eagles too much credit for a while. I still think uh, the people out there in the desert are giving too much credit there to the Eagles. They are the Bengals. You know, they are the Jets. That those are the the types of teams that they're keeping company with. Every team that they face has a great defensive resurgence, and I think that's going to happen today. And the Packers don't even keep this close at all. Let's move to a game I'm excited about: Washington uh, versus Pittsburgh. It's on Monday afternoon. The Steelers are favored by seven. I'm not buying it. I have the Washington football team winning in a big time upset and. I don't know if you guys know this, but I've seen into the future. This is the week I'm going to be catching up on y'all. I just noticed I've got the like favorite in all our disagreements except for this one. And if I can get this one right, then I'm I'm riding right back to the top. I'm going to be a story that everyone talks about, kind of like Alex Smith. Me and him showing the same sort of courage battling back <laughs> from our adversity. Washington football team gets the win. You go, Cynthia. <laughs> well, now I have to pick against them because I have 21-17 Steelers, but I'm not picking against fun comebacks or you, Greg, but I do only have a four-point win okay. for the Steelers. So it's not the biggest win on the planet. It is one of my finest picks, which means you and I are more in line than you may think, Greg. Interesting part for me on this one is what's going on in the red zone against good defenses or when, this, when the Steelers are on offense, right? Only one of four in terms of turning into a touchdown against the Ravens. This was a Ravens team that was severely depleted too. Kind of some weird stuff happens there. So I'm a little concerned to see what happens in that red zone for the Steelers in this matchup. What do you have, Hawk? Yeah, I am picking against Greg specifically. Has nothing to do with the game. I'm going with the Steelers. (laughs) Um, You know, and, and and the two players that I'm looking for, the difference makers on each of these teams, are the two chases. Chase Young and Chase Claypool. Uh, For the Pittsburgh Steelers, they have to get the ball down the field. Their average yards per completion is is low, but that's because they have guys they can get the ball to and they can run after the catch, but they have to stretch that defense. Um, uh, Well, let's just hope they get enough time with Chase Young breathing down Roethlisberger's neck. All right, we got three lone roses so far, two lone hawks. Now we go to Bills at 49ers. I'm teasing here for all the media majors at home. The 49ers are favored by one, and I am going with the Niners. Most there is back into the lineup. They got Most there, Ayuk, uh, Debo in there. But, I mean, th- I think this run run game is is so much better with Most there because he can get to the edge. It really is a difference maker. The run game has already been good, and they have a stable of backs that they can kind of plug and play. But Most there is a big play guy, fast guy, quick to the edge, and it really keeps that defense honest, which is why I think in this situation, it's going to be close. I think they're favored again by one, but I give the 49ers the edge. Cynthia, what do you got? I have the Bills. So the Bills by one in this one. There are some interesting pieces missing for San Francisco. However, the other part that you need to think about is how strong the defense for the Bills has come on lately, and specifically Tredavious White, one of my favorite corners, one of the best corners in the league. Nick Mullins, Tredavious White, advantage, White. I think that's an interesting Mm. combination there. And also, by the way, someone think to note on the injury report, I did notice that there are a bunch of corners missing for or potentially missing for the 49ers. So just keep an eye on that one because you could make it even better for like Stephon Diggs. Yeah, I like the Bills too. But just by a point, this is a great game. I don't feel too strong. The 49ers are so well coached. Uh, Hawk did a good job explaining why their offense is going to be better. Nick Mullins uh, hasn't played great, but all he's got to do is get in the hands of these playmakers. But ultimately, even without John Brown, I trust the Bills and their passing game and Josh Allen and their offense overall a little bit more uh, than the 49ers. This is kind of the Thanksgiving slate that we needed on Thanksgiving. Washington, (laughs) Pittsburgh, Bills. Yep, it's all right, Greg. It's uh, Greg. Greg gets emotional when he's talking about the slate we could, we should have had on Thanksgiving. Uh, all right. Well, I'll help up Greg out. You know what? As a matter of fact, we're going to find out what's wrong with Greg. We're going to go to break. We'll be back in just a moment with more game day view percentage.
welcome back. Guest who decided to grace us with his presence again. Greg, nice to have you, buddy. More or less. You ready to play? Let's play a game. All right, more or less. The internet's back. Maybe for maybe for now. Washington at the Steelers. More or less than 43 points, y'all. More or less than 43 points. Ah, why, Greg? I'm feeling, why? I'm feeling that uh, Washington front against that Pittsburgh offensive line. That was one of the reasons why I picked them to win this game is I think Pittsburgh's O-line not as good as people think. And Washington D-line, we know they're really good, especially inside. So not a lot of points, a lot of defense in this game. Agreed. I'm with you on that one. Okay, we ready for the next one? We didn't tell you our scores, yep. but I can tell you my score when we do it. Cowboys at Ravens, more or less than 45 total points. More or less than 45 total points. Cowboys at Ravens. Mm. What I'm do you going have less. Uh, <gasps> I don't like the Cowboys offense. And then the Ravens is going to be kind of more defensive, and they haven't been putting up a bunch of points either. But be on the lookout for Des Bryant return. That's what I'm excited about. But I'm saying less. Throw up the X. I have a more than that. I have 31 to 17. That's 48 total points, which is more than 45. I think we see a nice bounce back Lamar Jackson. We start to see some throwing the ball. That's going to be great. Greg, why do you have more? Nice. You got less, right? I mean, everyone's expecting these guys to come off the COVID list and everyone's injured and they're just going to be fine. Uh, I don't know. I'm not feeling right. it. Okay, fine. Well, okay, grumpy grump. Eagles at Packers, more or less. <laughs> than 50 points more or less than 50 points eagles pack us what oh we just why we keep disagreeing with you we got to keep track of track of this i mean aaron Rodgers is involved and the eagles offense is involved uh that means they'll set up the packers defense to score so there we go <laughs> <laughs> okay ready did you did you already dab hawk did i miss the dab no okay, no I, okay. I got you right here Yes, Broncos <laughs> at Chiefs, more or less than 51 points. This is the last one. Make it right. Get it right. What? <laughs> How are the Broncos going to score? The ridiculous. Chiefs defense is really good. Is it? Yeah, but they're yes, not as good as Patrick defense. Mahomes. I mean, Patrick, oh, right. How's Denver's offense going to score? What are they going to do? Oh, they, I guess they could run the ball like they did here, but I don't think that's going to happen on every down. What do you think? Yeah, I guess. I guess <laughs> Fine. Right. You guys don't want to play with me today. I'll change. You know what? I still want more. I don't want to be with but... Greg. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's it. No more game day view Fine. for a brief second there. We had the show we all wanted, just me and Cynthia, but Greg decided to come back. We got a great slate of games day <laughs> on Sunday. Be excited. Enjoy it. That does it for us. We'll see you next week, Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern on NFL Network. Peace. <laughs>